<laughs> yeah. Well, how, how about we just take a look at a, what you brought three? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what comes in what order. Uh, I, I can name two things that I brought. I think one is like the sort of first season when I was still holding myself up and writing every episode kind of by myself. Like, like th there's this scene from uh, it's Troy and Ob uh, Troy and Jeff on a football field, um, and I wanted to create this sort of this brief sort of flurry between the two of them. It's like Jeff is like this 35 year old guy. Uh, who, who's only he's trying to manipulate this younger kid into playing football because he's being blackmailed into doing that, uh, and uh, and there's just this sort of quick Abbott and Costello thing that goes between them that 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 has to do with race. So I so I, I brought that because it's sort of like post racial comedy, like because race isn't really an issue in the conversation. The idea that race is an issue is an issue, and uh, and and uh, then there's uh, I there's a second Second scene, are they labeled at all so that I could actually adequately cue these up? Uh, the, 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 I think what I might have also brought in anticipation of Donald Glover being here tonight is a, a sort of like a scene from uh, from one of our episodes, Mixology, which in which he becomes a man, his 21st birthday. There is no racial aspect to that story at all. Um, it's only and and Donald Glover's not really a he it, it, his character becomes a man in that episode, which entails him doing he walks Annie to her apartment door and he says good night to her and I think he sort of he 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 takes ownership of her as a as a as a sister character like because they went to high school together and there's not a, there, it's a half hour episode about that kid becoming a man and there is no there is no consciousness of race in that episode and 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 I thought that might be a conversation starter as well um, the. Uh, and if there's a third thing, it might be from uh, an, a first season episode. It might have something to do with the dean, uh, who also embodies my kind of racial obsession. Like, like he he wants to create a new mascot for the uh, for the for, for Greendale because the previous mascots were all offensive in some way. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody watches. Damn good show. <laughs> No, a lot of people watch. Everybody loves Parks and Rec. <laughs> Nobody watches our show either. Come on, man. Goddamn success. Parks and Rec. <laughs> meh, meh, meh. <laughs> no, no, Dan, you, you said... You're moving your chair further and further from me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a little bit closer. It's, like, it's, it's not going to distance you from me ideologically. <laughs> just to distance yourself literally. <laughs> so you mentioned, the, I guess part of the theme of the show is that the characters are kind of like post-racial in there. Because yeah, I noticed when I watch it, they, 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 everyone is kind of politically, politically correct. They, when anything offensive comes, up, the characters try to immediately correct it and jump on the person that's that's doing it. But it's also your way of attacking like the racism and stereotypes. Yeah, and, and make no mistake about it. Uh, I don't know if I'm covering the thing wrong or something. Uh, the the I, when I use the term post-racial, I, 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 there's a danger there of implying that the uh, the assumption is that oh yeah, it's over. Race is oh, it, race is over. Uh, it, 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 I, that's a term that academics have begun using in their analysis of television. I think what they're referring to is more it's, it's like what you referred to as the, the the politically correct age has started. So now the jokes are more about it's not so much that we suspect that somewhere within five miles of here somebody thinks that some race is inferior to another. It's more that we're dealing with the legacy of that stuff and, 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 and the cultural fallout of that. And we're, we're wondering what makes us racist, what makes us bad people, what we need to do to make the world a better place. And we're getting tripped up in each other's phone cords and kind of stumbling over each other. And I think that's what post-racial probably means comedically. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's like saying post-modern. What the hell does it mean? It just means later than Archie Bunker. That's what it means. Um, the the the, uh, uh, the the characters are you know they're 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 all different characters and they're all supposed to be real but the fact of television is it all comes from one showrunner's mind usually and my mind is as I said in the beginning it's racially obsessed and I I, I justify that by going I'm pretty sure our country is racially obsessed I think we are I think that we we we, we th there are those among us who willfully ignore that fact and that that's heroic too and there are those among us who embrace it and that's heroic and Blah blah blah. It's, it, it, there are, there is no, there is no scientific answer to it. So I just sort of jump into the quagmire and kind of flounder around and hope that my clumsiness is as entertaining as Michael Scott's. You know, as a as a god of this universe where all these people live. Uh, 
no. Uh, ha, what was what's I guess NBC's response to the type of stuff? That you, well, because when you compare to Parks and Recreation, they're pretty safe. You know, not not that you know, total pussies. Total yeah. pussies. <laughs> I'm, it's a joke. It's a yeah. No. Uh, it's, it's true. No, it's no, not. It's, no, a, it's not courageous think, to do hot button racial jokes. I, I totally like. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I think it's an interesting question because it, it's like, what is the way to, you know, combat racism or deal with race issues? And I think, I mean, one way which you alluded to, which was cool, was like, hey, let's do this story about Troy and have him just be a person in this story. And that's basically what our show is. It's like, let's have everyone be people and not be like, hey, this is this is just, this episode is about race. This episode about race. Like we have done that but i think the way we address race is just have characters who are diverse we have african-american character we have a an indian american character we have a biracial character and the other thing is our show is very diverse in terms of gender it's a show where um you know we do a lot of shows about gender actually we do we've had episodes called woman of the year we've had episodes where leslie's uh, called boys club i mean it's more about that because the main character is happens to be female so i think um you know, it, it, it's just we have different. We have just sort of tackled different issues, and I was I was very proud of the fact that last year our writing staff was five women and five men, and you know there was an African American person, an Asian American person, and it was it was just you know a nice sort of writing room where that we didn't. It, it was weirdly post racial, like it was that kind of sort of and in an actual yeah, way. Yeah, like I know it's it was kind of yeah, which was kind of and, and I know I know that doesn't exist, but you know presenting a world like that on TV, I think there's something to be said for that as well. That's so. what Roddenberry did, and then. You you have Norman Lear on the other side who goes like, no, I'm going to yeah. fucking go after this. I'm going to punch it like a punching bag. I'm going to make these proactive things yeah. happen. And and there's nothing that the, it, there are no heroes or villains. In oh, it. totally. Like, I, I worked on South Park, which was the exact opposite. And now this show, I mean, there's just one show is crazy, 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 pushing the envelope, trying to push people's buttons. And then this show is warm and about people getting along and, you know, presenting a world where that can happen. So, I mean, it's just kind of two ways of, do, of dealing with it. You know, Probably the only crime you can commit is dishonesty and right. because it's an inherently dishonest honest medium. I mean, we're pushing Colgate and tampons, and, and, and it's 20-minute chunks, Simultaneously. broken up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's called a speedball. It doesn't make... The, 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 the joke road, made man. no sense. It was riffed. It made no sense at all. There's no, there's no need to groan it or laugh at it. It made no sense. Um, the, the, uh, the, 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 it's an inherently dishonest medium. We are schlepping for, like, transnational conglomerates. We know this, but we are also connecting with mass groups of people on an unprecedented level. Totally we have totally. the power to change the way people think, or rather, establish the way they think, for better or for worse, because they're watching it from childhood. And so there is, it, the only crime you can commit is to try to manipulate people, I think. Right. I think you have to be honest about, if you're like me, and you wake up every morning and go, and go like, I have racial things on my mind, again, for no reason. Then you have to write about them. And right, then right. that's your show. And, 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 and if you're, if it's a, like Parks and Rec, it's very interesting to notice that because I never noticed that, but mm -hmm. the effect is happening. It's a warm, friendly, normal show An that happens world. to have diversity. So it's like, as with Star Trek, like people are tuning in, and the message is, "Hey, no big deal. <laughs> we're not talking right. about this every, every right. Five we're just minutes. talking about human stories. Like the, all the characters are humans. Let's talk about emotional truths and sort of tell stories that are from our lives. And people happen to be whatever race. You know, that's not to say we won't ever deal with racial issues we have, but not you know not as aggressively. I think. But there's also stuff behind the camera that goes on, um, and it's not even uh, you know purposeful. But sometimes, li like we'll have people coming in for you know a two-line part, and then you know I'd look at casting, and it's twelve white guys from UCB, and I'm like, okay, you know, let's <laughs> let's bring in some other people, and it's just you know keeping an eye on that. It's and it's not that anyone said this person has to be white, but you know, no one thought about it when they saw the twelve white people. Yeah, so. casting is is a whole Magella. It's crazy like like casting is weird because you have to accept that and this is the writers guild not the producers guild but it's like it, the writers are producers in in, in tv and so so it, it 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 is insane like i always tell the story of when i worked on heat vision and jack in the 90s and uh i i didn't notice until the day that somebody told me is that you have no people of color in your entire cast and i think that happens a lot and I, th I think that w yeah. David Milch said something on a panel, something about, like, he, he goes, w you know, w w white people grow up white, you watch white television, you hire white writers, they have your sensibility, the, the syndrome continues. And that's what started spinning me in, 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 into a proactive place because you go, well, there was proactivity before I got here. 
So it's not about egalitarianism. It's not about neutrality. It's not. It's you can't just be a libertarian about it. The free market won't make it happen. There was something happening before I got here that has resulted in disproportionality. Because when I when I did my first pilot and and. At the eleventh hour, someone said, "You got no black people in your show." Period, and and it was like, "Well, what part do, do we cast that?" And that's supposed to be that guy. And that's uh, how about the dentist? Uh, which is what happens. And then you you have like I, I, I it marked me emotionally. It was nineteen ninety nine. I pulled up to the casting session, and there was a line of dudes, all only sharing one quality among them. They were all ages. They were all heights. They were all weights. They were all uh, they had all different resumes, drama comedy. They were all just black guys just lined up to play this dentist that had been <laughs> thrown to them like a bone and I didn't want to be, I, I went this feels bad. This feels like, sorry, I'm not, there, again no heroes or villains but something that has got to change about that. When we cast Community we, I was obsessed with that. I was like we got to avoid that situation. The irony is that in casting it involves actually not, you can't just shake up a jar of jelly beans that are humanity it, because casting actually a good casting director categorizes people like ha, that, that the casting industry is driven by this sort of like the, so, so, so the, what we, we ended up doing is just washing over every roll like fluoride toothpaste like like with the like a rainbow of flavor over every roll like we would go okay it's Asian Annie day it's black Annie day it's Latina Annie day it's that, white yeah, Annie have, day that's like actually a question I have uh, if, if I if I may Dave um, like I wonder we always talk about this in the development stage with writers and since we're talking to a group of writers, 